Hello everybody and welcome to another live stream here on Adobe Behance with your double dose of Maddies today. <laughs> um, this is so cool. When, when Emma said to me last week, Maddie, um, we've got, you know, we've got Maddie Belmore, you know, coming to Adobe Live, who's going to host? And I was like, oh my goodness, Maddie, yes. it has to be us together. It's so good to finally meet you. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm so good. Thank you. It's awesome to meet you too. I'm very excited for the double Maddie stream. <laughs> I hope you're sitting down, everybody, because I can tell already uh, from the chat that everybody is like, whoa, a double <laughs> dose of, of Maddie's today. What can you expect? <laughs> um, so quick shout out to, to everyone that's joined. So it looks like the whole crew have assembled for us today, maybe. Um, and so Sean, hey, Sean, Andreas, um, Tony's in the house. Hey, Tony. Tony's going to be with you tomorrow, of course, Maddie. So um, more um, even more fun to be had tomorrow. Um, hi, Robert. Hi, Gareth. Doris. Hi, um, you know, everybody <laughs> is is you know is here for us today, Maddie. Um, and as I said, I've been excited to have a stream with you. As I've seen so many of your streams on Adobe Live, um, so this is great. But tell everybody, you know, what have we got in store today? We are going to be working on a children's book style illustration. The theme is spring, Easter, um, start of a new season. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. And so, yes, there's lots of our audience that have, um, you know, have dialed in today to join us on, on Behance. Um, there are, they are already an amazing lot. They do so much. I've seen their work. A lot of people share their work on Instagram. So if you're going to be drawing, draw along with us. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, for Maddie, let me know. I'll make sure that they get asked um, during the stream today. Today. So if you're on YouTube, come over to Behance and join us there for some, some laughter. Um, and I can see <laughs> Ruth in the chat has gone, Maddie! <laughs> um, this is brilliant. So Maddie, yeah, tell us a little bit about you and your work and what you do and you know, anybody that doesn't know you. Okay. Um, well, I am a um, digital and traditional painter. I like to work in gouache, but digital um, in the digital realm, Photoshop is my favorite. Um, and I do a lot of environments. I love lush green landscapes and those types of scenes. <laughs> uh, for today, I can show you a little bit um, of a, a series that I did um, the end of last year. Um, this was for Folktale Week. And this was sort of the yeah children's book um, folktale style illustrations. And so this is what I'm going to be working on today and tomorrow is something kind of in this realm. <laughs> so just to show a little bit. I love it. And they look so, um, they look amazing. Like they, they're so warm and so childlike. Like you'd want to open up a storybook to see these kind of, of characters. And, oh, thank and you. you know, <laughs> honestly, they just look so good. And where do you get your inspiration from then? Where does this come from? Um, I think just, I mean, my main inspiration for my art is from nature, um, 100%. This particular series, I was just kind of trying to reminisce back to what inspired me when I was a kid and um, the type of illustration books I liked reading. One of my favorites was the Angelina Ballerina books. So I think that, yes. <laughs> that's why I started thinking about the mice. And then um, I created this series and I've kind of been adding to it a little bit, like in the around Christmas time, I made a holiday scene, a couple holiday scenes with them. And now with Easter coming up, I thought I would do another scene with them uh, in springtime. Love it. I, and what you're already sharing here, like this is a, um, oh, I just, I honestly, I just love the way that you draw. I, I really do. Oh, so this thank is you. So good. And, um, <laughs> Any tips for anybody that's getting into, you know, drawing, thinking of illustrating a children's book, you know, what tips would you give people to on how you got started and tips for them? Um, well, I, I hold, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm very qualified when it comes to like the, 
the end of that process. I've not actually illustrated a book that's been published or anything like that. But as far as making the art and creating art in that style, um, I, yeah, throughout, throughout the painting today, I'll try to give as many tips as I can. And um, hopefully, <laughs> yeah, hopefully it'll be helpful. Any questions you guys have, you're welcome to, you're welcome to ask. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so I can get started blocking things in if, if you'd like, if we're ready. Oh, yes, please. Yes. Okay. Yes, straight in. Yeah. So you're in Photoshop today. Yes, I'm in Photoshop. And um, the way that I'm going to start, the way I've been starting these is actually with filling in um, using like a pattern uh, for the background to kind of get rid of that anxiety about the blank white canvas. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to go to my paint bucket here up top. I have already selected pattern instead of foreground. So I'm just going to go here. I have a, a bunch of patterns that I've made from scans of um, yeah, watercolor and different types of materials. Um, so I can just pop that in and it's at least got rid of that canvas and we've got a, a nice texture back there. Nice. And it can feel when you're starting a project quite overwhelming to sit back a moment and just think, right, where do I start? It really, <laughs> yeah, it really is. And mm. it's nice to not have that white back there for me. I like to start from more of a medium um, value. So even if it's gray, I know it's better than um, better than nothing, but I'd like to start with a like, color. So I'm going to try to pick some green that's like a very earthy, springy green with a lot of yellow. Very nice. Something and like then that. how did you get your colors? Because um, as anybody in the chat will know, I'm a big fan of bright, uh, you know, the brighter the better uh, colors. But, you know, how did you get your color palette? Because in all of your, your you know, your illustrations that you just shared, you know, they're beautiful. Oh, thank you. I love bright colors too. Um, sometimes when I'm starting out, they're a bit more muted. And then as the painting goes on and on, they, they tend to get brighter. And then, you know, I'll use some adjustment layers and things at the end to like bump it up and get it to where I like it. Um, but I think it's just following um, personal taste and doing a lot of studies um, from from nature, like painting from photos or from life, uh, from nature and kind of observing the colors there and picking out what I like best. <laughs> mm. No, that definitely works. Um, so I'm going to grab a watercolor um, brush, something that has a, an organic texture to it. Um, I, I made these brushes um, from my uh, paintings, from scans of my of my paintings. So oh, wow. I love the detail. I love the fact that you've made these. You know, you've got these swatches of these textures. You've made your brushes. So thank fun. you. I, I'm really love, I, I love traditional um, art textures, but I love the process of digital and how much you can um, edit, manipulate. You can just do everything, you know, it, digital is like, you have all the options in the world. So I'm always trying to like bring more traditional art textures, but like with the power of digital <laughs> together. I love it, love it. I think we did a stream a while ago. I can't remember who did it, Tim will probably know, but it was a stream on brushes and, um... And, and taking using Adobe Capture to take pictures of textures and create brushes out of them. So cool. And uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. So I just have some watercolor um, back there to kind of look a little bit more organic. And I kind of like to merge things down as I go, at least um, within certain layers. So for example, everything that's part of the background, I'm probably just going to merge that down to the background layer. And then um, I'll have a separate layer for like the bunny, separate layer for the mice, mm -hmm. um, but probably everything everything, all the shading and everything for them will be squished onto that one layer. So I like to kind of keep them somewhat minimal. It just mm -hmm. makes me feel less overwhelmed in my uh, yeah. document. Yeah, yeah. No, that's so good. And how um, organized are you with naming layers and things? So some <laughs> people that, that don't worry at all, some people don't save. We had, we had a discussion about this, I think, with Tony um, a few weeks ago. But um, And then we've got someone like Joe Allen, who's on our streams all the time, who is very much an advocate for naming every layer. So how about you? Where'd you sit? Oh no, I, I do not name layers. I did, I named some in preparation for this stream, um, yeah. you know, the background and stuff. But as I'm painting my process, I have way too many times where I create and then merge and then create and then merge. So naming them is kind of like, it's, it seems kind of pointless to me um, when I'm the only one working with the file. If it's some yeah. client work or something like that, totally different story. Yeah. <laughs> I also really rely on the auto select layer 
um, if anybody's not familiar with this. Um, so if you if you click up here on your, your move tool um, up at the top here, you can check this box and you can decide if you want to select a group or a layer. So then basically, um, if you have auto select layer, then anything that you click on with your stylus or your mouse, mouse, it's going to automatically over here in your layers palette, like it's going to make that the active layer. So I rely on that all the time. Instead of going over here to find the name, I just click on what I want and it just selects it for me. That's brilliant. So I can be lazy and it makes it really easy. <laughs> no, it's like a good tip. Something I didn't know about actually. That's so good. Um, How long did this sketch take you then, Abby? How did it from from the start to, to this point? Probably, it probably took a couple hours, honestly, um, because I kept changing and deciding like where the mice were going to be, and I kept moving them around and trying to make the composition work. Um, I have a, I can show you here a rougher version of it, and um, there's been there had been a lot of erasing and moving and just trying to make uh, composition work. Um, and then I kind of traced over that with cleaner lines to make this drawing. It looks so good. Oh, thank you. So I'm just uh, blocking in the shape of the, the bunny. I'm gonna do the bunny and the, the mice, and then we'll do some shading on them and texturing. Nice, and are you using an iPad at the moment to do this or? Am I using what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Oh, sorry. What are you? Uh, what are you drawing on? Is it an iPad? Oh yeah. From, um, I have a stylus. I'm on the uh, Wacom Cintiq. I have the Wacom Cintiq 22. Cool. Always good to know. Yes. Find out what people are using. <laughs> oh, it does look so good. So, how long have you been doing this for then? Because it looks like you've been doing this for forever. <laughs> oh, thank you. I've been yeah, doing. How many digital art for probably like eight years now um but it's as far as like this kind of style i recently got inspired um to move into like a more whimsical kind of feeling with my art i was a lot more i guess realistic or closer to like a photographic look when i first got into painting digital painting and i guess i've been exploring different types of styles and letting my own creativity come out a little bit more. It's, uh, yeah, it definitely shows, you know, it's, uh, it is really, it's so good. You've got so much appreciation in the chat, by the way, everybody's saying, wow, you know, Maggie's work is always amazing. Um, you know, some genius just said, you know, PC with a Wacom display um, or Wacom display tablet and Photoshop is always Maddie's setup. You've got some hardcore fans here. Oh, so, thanks you guys. So, People have watched your streams before, so this is so good. It's I think you've seen a, a stream that you did at Max one, uh, was it last year or maybe the year before? Um, but yeah, that was the first time I'd seen some of your work. I was like, oh my gosh. So oh, it's so good you. to be on a stream with you finally. <laughs> I know every time when I see, and it's, I'm always, I see your name with the Maddie with the Y and I'm always like, yes, because um, I always see IE, Maddie's with the IE, but I'm like, yeah, Maddie with the Y, I like it. <laughs> Nice. And you also spell Madeline in the same way that I spell Madeline as well, because we're the oh M-A-D-E-L-E-I-N-E. -E -E. Yeah, that is so the... cool. This is so good. <laughs> okay, so. I've blocked these guys in. That's always like a little bit of sort of a, a boring part. So we've got that out of the way. Um, you could have also uh, made a selection and just kind of filled them in that way. That's like a faster way. But um, I like to sometimes paint them in when I'm doing these very textured artworks, because then you get that edge that has like these sort of gritty textures instead of the selection tool hard edge. So it's kind of why it's worth taking extra time there. Okay, so let's get some color on these. Um, I like to select the layer that I'm going to work on and then uh, click the lock transparency bucket or <laughs> the bucket lock transparency icon in here, then you can um, paint anything you want within that layer and it just kind of holds it holds you to your your shape. That's good. Um, so I can pick a brush that has like a big wide um, kind of texture and and do like something like this where you end up with a hard edge and then soft edge shading inward. So I'm just going to pick color for the bunny um, to do just just give it a little bit more interest um, just put another color in there and kind of tap it in so it's not only pure white we're going to just try to make it a little more interesting 
love it. Maybe give like a little blush. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, um, you know, like you can see kids would just absolutely love these, these characters. Oh, it makes you. such a difference as well. When you're a parent reading stories, you know, then it, it makes it more interesting for the adult. <laughs> when <laughs> I selfishly say this because the amount of times, um, you know, and you think, oh, actually, no, this is, this is a lovely book. So, um, yeah, really, the illustration really makes such a difference. I think that's one of my, um, and probably true for a lot of people, it's one of my, like, earliest introductions into artwork as a kid you know picture books mm, that's like yeah. one of the first things that you see that you can I think subconsciously a lot of inspiration has come from there without me even thinking about it until recently I started thinking back on some of my favorite books from when mm. I was a kid and my art style now and I'm like I think I had a lot more subconscious inspiration from that than I realized before yeah oh definitely I find that that um so we one of the books that was big in our house was the singing mermaid um, by Julia Donaldson and it was beautiful you, you know these mermaids and the, all of this the fish and the seagulls and the, the shore and the sand um, and then I look at how I draw uh, you know the kids because I, I do a few little little bits in fresco and I, and it's it's so inspired by that you know yeah. you see it so yeah um, so aside from the uh, the lock transparency, the other thing that I do often that's kind of serves the same sort of purpose is the clipping masks. So if I'm if I'm pretty sure about what I'm going to do, I'll use the lock transparency and like paint right on that layer. But if I'm like not sure and I just want to try something out, I'll make a new layer and then right click, create clipping mask, um, and then I'll paint on that layer. So I'm going to grab a watercolor brush. And I want to add a little bit of shading on the bunny. So I'm going to pick like a soft blue gray color and just do this on a separate layer just in case I don't like it, I want to change it or something. Annika says, um, I love how this is coming along already. Oh, thank you. Hi, Annika. It does look so cute. Thank you. Um, and because, the, because this was on its own layer, the shadow, I can also, um, you know, image adjust hue saturation and just kind of shift through and see if I like like a more purple or something different and just kind of try it out. Mm. So do you um, have any of these, you know, the, the images that you shared with us at the start, um, do you have any of those printed? Do you have any on your walls anywhere like, you know? Um, I don't have those up, but I do have some of my artwork around. There's one of my uh, paintings. I have a print over here. I could I could show, <laughs> um, but this is a this is a gouache painting that I did. It's a bit of a different style, but that's a traditional one. Very nice. Oh, thank you. But I think these would be really cute in like a kid's room or something. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking exactly that. Yeah, that you could have, yeah, there's so many uses for these, even on um, wrapping paper for kids' presents. Oh, or, or, you know. That's a fun idea. So many of these things, especially with the mice and yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. Annika, right? it's so good. Oh. <laughs> Capital letters there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, I'm going to block in the, um, there's sort of like a wooden, like a fallen tree log behind them that they're, um, the mice are sitting on. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to block that in. And I'm trying to choose a color that's like, like the mice are sort of a brownish red color. And I'm going to mm -hmm. go with more of a, um, a little bit more of a cool brown for the log because these could easily end up being the same color. And then the mice like wouldn't stand out at all. Yeah. So I want to make sure that even though they're both kind of brownish, that they're really on different temperatures and then you can can see them more. And there's a Tell little bit of- We're, we're oh, 19 sorry. minutes into the stream and we've already, there's so much already on the page. Oh, so, um, thank you. Yeah, this is so good. So how are you, um, you know, where, how do you feel about, you know, the, the sharing to social media and sharing your work? Because I've seen, you know, some people, uh, you know, say that they feel a slave to, to constantly, you know, uh, mm -hmm. sharing on socials. And other people say, no, I don't do it at all. I'm, yeah. you know, so how, where are you on, on that? Uh, oh, that's an interesting, it's an interesting topic. Um, 
I think, I hope, I think I've gotten to somewhat of a healthy place with it at the moment. I do like to share on there, but sometimes it can be a lot of work if you're trying to keep up with it in the am amount that you have to, to really be favored yeah. by the algorithms on these um, sites. So yeah. I've kind of let that go a little bit and I just more post when I can and when I want to. And um, I think in the past, there was a time where I was really trying to keep up with it and it was a bit stressful. And now I'm just like, it is what it is. I'm going to post when I can and when I feel like want to do it. And then that's just all it is, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I completely agree. It's um, yeah. The, yeah. Definitely. The algorithm, there's something that's been changing across all of these things. It's mad. What you see now and what you don't see and what's hidden mm -hmm. and how to find it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think as long as you, I think the one thing that I've stuck with is um, when you can, if you post consistently, that's helpful, but you don't have to post consistently on some kind of crazy schedule where it's like, you know, multiple times a day or even multiple times a week. But if you do like once a week or once every two weeks, or even if once a month is as consistent as you is a person can be, as long as that that's their thing and they do that, then I think um, it can work for you that way. Just doing some level of consistency, whatever works for you personally. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Got to be healthy. Yeah, exactly. That's more important. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just doing a little bit of shading. Um, I'm using a brush. It's a charcoal um, textured brush, and I'm just shading in a little bit. I like to get, um, we were talking about like speed. <laughs> I, I do like to kind of quickly go through the beginning part of the painting. Cause for me, um, as soon as everything is like blocked in and I get some sense of what colors are where and what values are where, like getting the big shapes blocked in, it really helps me visualize like where things are gonna go. And it's just so much, I find the beginning part of the process can be tough if I linger there. So I just kind of like to block things in as as fast as I can, obviously, and doing it well, um, but then I can have fun with it more. So just we're almost there. Um, I want as far as like things being blocked in, I want to also block in these um, kind of stylized bushes in the back. And then I think, um, yeah, we'll be in a good place. with it. It's amazing. And yeah, you have done that fast. We're 22 minutes into the stream and it's already, I don't <laughs> think we've ever been this far along in a stream so this is amazing um and for everybody watching you know if you have any questions for maddie today um you know pop them in oh we have a question yes. annika uh, so annika asks how did you start making your brushes um did you take images um and then bring them into photoshop or did you create them in photoshop oh yes oh my gosh i love making brushes it's a huge passion for me now um i started the way i kind of got into it was just sort of manipulating brushes that I already had. Like I would um, have a brush from uh, another set that I had gotten and I'd realize like, oh, I, I like this brush, but I kind of want it to be a little bit more see-through see or I want to make this, the end of it like smaller or something. So then I started going to the brush palette and just like changing little things about brushes that I regularly used. That was like my first uh, gateway into making my own. And then I started thinking like, oh, well, I don't know. I just got curious and started making some. And my first brushes were all probably just, yeah, nothing from photos, but just like I'd make little um, shapes and little scribbles and then sort of turn those into a brush. So it was all done in Photoshop. And then it's kind of evolved into also um, painting things and scanning them and using those textures. Good. It's all good to see them in one place. And, and actually, Annika and Robert have mentioned in the chat for everybody that you've got a digital set of brushes. There's a link in the chat that's been linked to. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thanks, Robert. And thanks, Annika, for mentioning that as well. Yeah, the set that I'm using here, I made a, a set um, for like children's book illustration style work, um, specifically with a lot of handmade textures that were like a bit more rough and gritty and interesting because I think those are fun for, um, yeah, for kids and those kinds of illustrations. Definitely. This is so good. So um, this week on Adobe Live, so you're here tomorrow with Tony. Um, so we've got another day. What are you doing with Tony tomorrow? Is it more of the same? Yes, we're going to be continuing on this. So today I'm getting it blocked in and mm -hmm. um, 
taking it to some level of detail, but um, there's going to be a lot of little things with the flowers and um, the textures and everything at the end. So I think um, one hour today and, and then tomorrow, we should be able to get this one to a good finished uh, place. Amazing. So that'll be good tomorrow with Tony. And then on Wednesday, we've got our very own Robert from the German streams, and he is going to be with Michael Munich, and they're covering Premiere Pro and the new features in Premiere Pro. So that's on Wednesday. So, so nice week this week. Um, and approaching, you know, our, there's a, a holidays coming up now. We've got Good Friday coming up, Bank Holiday Monday in the UK. So we've got two <laughs> public holidays to look forward to. So, yes. Uh, Tony says, just one more sleep until I get to work with Maddie B again. Oh, yay. <laughs> oh, yes, we had a lot of fun in the, the last stream. I always have fun on streams with Tony. We I always we always joke, I have to wear waterproof mascara because I end up absolutely <laughs> laughing till I cry. That's um, hilarious. There have been so many funny things. There's something, um, we had a, a quiz show, so Tim puts together these amazing quiz shows. We've got one coming up, I think. There is another yeah. quiz coming up. Oh my gosh, Maddie, you should you should totally come. Yes. And um, oh, it always ends up in raucous laughter. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and there's a video that I I shared on my Instagram. And every now and then I'll go back to it and watch it and just sit and laugh. It it makes me absolutely howl. So yeah, oh, that sounds great. Fun. This stream team, lots of fun. Oh look at those mice now. So I'm using a, um, a a brush that has like a kind of watercolor salt salty kind of texture to it, yeah. and I just have the um, again with the lock transparency selected, so I can make the brush like much bigger and then kind of tap it um, around the edges to give some shading. And it's a really fast way. You can use any airbrush for this, but one with texture is fun. Um, but it's a really fast way to give shading. Give them a little blush. I love like, giving them little rosy cheeks. <laughs> I love the rosy cheeks, especially <laughs> the bunny. Oh my god! Um, I think I'm oh, gonna. Annika. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I just saw in the chat. Annika is wishing me. Thank you, Annika. It's my birthday on Friday, so um, I started celebrating <gasps> early because you know oh. birthdays. Um, but yeah. Happy early birthday. Thank you very much. So, um, always fun having a birthday, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm loving how this is all coming together. I'm definitely going to tune in tomorrow um, to watch you and Tony to see this, uh, you know, really come together tomorrow. Oh, that'd be awesome. So I'm going to um, block in one more thing, which is the flower crown. I'm going to pick a bright color that is not the color that it's going to be, but it's a color that's very easy for me to see what I'm actually doing against the background. So, yeah. And someone in the chat mentioned that it was your birthday too. Have you just I had a I had a birthday last month, so it was pretty recent. It was, <laughs> yeah, springtime birthdays. Happy birthday to you for that. For that Thank birthday. you. Oh, I love it. You're so fast at coloring all this in. It's amazing. <laughs> well, Honestly, you. amazing. Oh. I just see the scene now. I can imagine the wording that would go along with an illustration like this in the book. You know? And of um, magical forest mm -hmm. animals. Very nice. I wish I was more of a of a writer. To be honest, I I can have ideas for worlds and characters and, and environments, but I, I'm not much of like a, a full on storyteller. So maybe I'll collaborate someday with someone on that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure there are loads of people that would be ready to <laughs> jump in. Anyone in the chat, let us know. I'm sure. <laughs> so do you have any uh, big, exciting projects and things like that coming up that you're working on right now? Um, I am working on actually... Um, a couple of things, I'm gonna be making a new brush set. It seems like every time I finish one, I just like get, 
but I'll be like two weeks and then I'll be like, okay, I want to make something else. <laughs> so I'm going to be um, making a new brush set. Uh, I'm also going to be working on a gouache painting course. So um, those are the main things going on with me right now. And hopefully I'll have some time to uh, also do some like personal painting artworks and things like that. That sounds good. Viola in the chat is very happy that you've got a new brush set coming. Oh, thank and you. Bruce, and Bruce as well. <laughs> He's like, woohoo, brush set. <laughs> I, I can't stop. Well, part of it is every time I get um, interested in painting in a, in a different style and exploring a style, that's what ends up happening. Like I started getting interested in doing children's book illustration. And I was like, you know what, I need certain, I have certain textures in mind I want to be able to use. And then that's how it happens. <laughs> so. And you mentioned your painting course. Sandrina asks, do you use a platform for them? Um, I am going to be, um, this one is going to be with uh, Domestica, actually. Um, I guess this is breaking news because I haven't mentioned it anywhere yet. But um, yeah, that's where the course is going to be. And it's it's not going to be for a few months um, before it's out. But yes, that is in progress. Yeah, cool. Well, all the yeah. best. Yeah. Thank you. Really good. Really good. Okay, so I've got this um, blocked in. So now I'll go again with the lock transparency up here. So then I can um, paint in whatever color I want. And I, I think I'm just gonna go around and put some nice um, spring colors on these, these flowers. Nice. Yellows and light pinks and things like that. it's kind of fun if the original color shows through a little bit it's kind of like an underpainting so that bright mm. pink um, I don't mind if there's like little tiny um, bits of it and textures coming through I think that, that's kind of fun I like that you can see so many textures as you've zoomed into this bit already there's so much texture there whether it's the mice it's the the rabbit the grass that you know the, the log you know all of it it's just textures everywhere it's just so good <laughs> Pink and maybe um, maybe I'll do some purples or blues. I kind of want to keep it. Um, it's not a limited color palette, I don't think, but I do kind of want to keep things cohesive and feeling like natural. So yeah, try to pick colors that that work together. Oh, it's really coming together. It looks so good. Well, if anyone has questions uh, today for Maddie, please pop them in the chat. We'll make sure they get asked. Um, no, this is so good. Thank you. Yes, please, you guys, if you have any questions um, about anything, let me know anything I'm, I'm doing. Yeah, it is just, it is really, really good. And do you find then that you have a, a colour palette that you, you really stick to? Because I know you're just going in, you know, your colour wheel and you're just pulling out colors as you go. Like I, I've not seen like a, a swatch as, as such. Um, um, I think I have like a subconscious uh, color preferences that end up coming out because I, like you said, I yeah. don't have a swatches or like a strict yeah. palette, but I, I do find that I end up like just leaning towards the same favorite kinds of uh, hues and favorite kind of look. Um, for this one, I'm trying to keep it a little bit more I mean, I wouldn't say pastel because it's not really, but a little bit more neutral, I guess, than um, some of the other ones that I showed earlier that were like really bright colors. I think because of the springtime, I, I just thought it might be nice to be like a little bit softer, but knowing me, it'll probably just look like the other ones by the end. <laughs> so. No, nice. You know your colors, you know your yeah, <laughs> way you wanna. It just looks so lovely. Thank you. Viola shares uh, in the chat that every time I try to go for another color palette, I start to feel itchy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And uh, uh, Stuart um, asked a question earlier that Jane has just shared. Thank you. I totally missed that. So thank you, Jane, for sharing again. Um, so do you decide on your light source before you start painting? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, usually, yes. But I have to be honest, when I'm doing these kind of illustrations, the storybook ones, sometimes I 
I feel like I, I don't think about that as much as I do when I'm painting something that's like more realistic, I guess. With these kinds of illustrations, I feel like you can sort of bend reality a little bit more. So uh, I'm not as strict with thinking like, okay, the light's coming from here and this and that. Um, I feel like I'm a little bit more strict with that when I'm painting in certain styles rather than this one. But um, yeah, I guess, you know, with the bunny, the the shadowing on the bunny makes it seem like the lighting is coming pretty much from the top, maybe a tiny bit more from the left. And with these um, bushes, it's doing the same thing. So I think subconsciously, <laughs> I did think about that on some level, but um, I do feel like with these type of illustrations, I, 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 I'm not as strict with those rules, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it works completely. It must be subconscious. You've been doing this so long that it's all subconscious now. And it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to add the little, the little eyes to the mice. Mm -hmm. You can add a little shine there. So I'll probably do, um, a couple, I like to do a couple little shines, one that's like reflecting um, sort of like color around there and then we'll do like a bright white one. And Norsh asked a question for you. Um, so throughout your career as an illustrator, how do you manage to find new clients? Uh, um, for me, I feel like I've been really lucky with uh, social media um, as a way to find work. Uh, a lot of work that I've done has been through my Instagram. People just came across my Instagram and uh, contacted me that way. So when I was first uh, looking for, for work, I, I feel like I had to search out a little bit more and then slowly, like as my social media grew, um, now I basically just am more responding to inquiries rather than seeking out work specifically. So um, that's why a lot of times, um, yeah, people ask me uh, about these things. And I, and I say, I know it's social media, it's hard because we were just saying earlier that it can be really tough yeah. mental health wise, but it also can really um, can be very helpful with your like career wise too, as far as uh, finding clients and things. So it is good to put yourself out there. You don't have to be a slave to it, but having work out there can really help. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I need to find your active. Have we got your Instagram in the chat? Tim, do you have uh, Maddie's Instagram that you can share in the chat, please? Yeah, and if it's, it, it should be just um, Instagram um, slash Maddie Bellwart. Um, so if that makes it easier, <laughs> you should be able to find oh. me there. <laughs> it's just my name. Fabulous. Um, so I have some brushes that are like uh, scans of just crayon marks with different kinds of curves and lines and things. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to be using those to give a little bit of like a fuzzy look to the to the mice. <laughs> Brilliant. That's so good. I'm going to turn I'm down the, the opacity, sorry. <laughs> It's uh, Tony and Tim both shared your Instagram in the chat there. So everybody, if you're not following, oh, thank you. <laughs> get in there. Well, Please. This, this is so good. My are so cute. <laughs> they are, though, aren't they? They are. Wow. And we are, honestly, we've been on for 38 minutes. Awesome. And just all of this already, just amazing. Amazing. It's great that you're with us for a couple of streams this week. Um, yeah, it, really good to have you on, Maddie. Oh, well, thank you. It's great to be here. Um, I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> Bruce asks a question, uh, you know, how... How do you come up with these illustrations? Are you inspired from what you see around you in the Netherlands? Oh, um, hey Bruce, thank you for the question. Yes, I'm definitely inspired by um, the environments here. Um, I feel like so much of my painting um, is based on the, especially the like flora of the area and the, um, the forests. I like to go to the forest here and see, yeah, I've seen like cute little animals, um, mice and uh, hedgehogs and like woodland, little woodland 
tiny creatures like that. Love so, it. yeah. Love it. And Annika asks, um, do you ever hide the sketch to see the values or if the values are working during the process? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I do like to check my values. I don't even think I've done it so far here. Um, I like to turn my painting into black and white. Um, there's a shortcut that I use for that that I can show you guys really quick. Um, yeah. Some of you probably know this already. Um, but if you go to view uh, proof setup and then custom, um, all you have to do is under device to simulate, you just select working gray dot gain 20%. That's what's right here. So just select that from the drop down and press OK. And then after you have that set up, every time that you press Control Y, it will show you your artwork in uh, black and white. So you can kind of see if the shading, how that's looking. So it's nice to check on that because, for example, things like the mice right now, they have a pretty similar value to like the, the wood, um, the fallen log behind them. So realistically, um, for them to pop more, it might be helpful for me to like either darken the log or like make them darker or something like that. Um, okay. It's hard when you're looking at it in color because you, do, you don't always pick those things up as easily. Yeah, so. that's such a good tip. Such a good tip. And then Jane would like to know, um, do you draw these characters from memory or from reference? Mm. So when I first, because I've done quite a few of these illustrations so far, and when I first started doing it, I was Googling, you know, pictures of um, like fiddle field mice and things like that. And I was definitely using reference, even though they're like very stylized and, you know, they're not very realistic, but I was using reference. And the more that I draw them, now I can kind of draw them just kind of based on my memory of the other ones that I've drawn because I've, I've been, I guess, kind of practicing it with making these. Um, but when I was working on the sketch for this, I did look up reference for this little guy down here because he's like on his toes and I hadn't really drawn one in that position yet. And I was trying to think of how their legs bent and how it worked. So I, I did look one up to see how to do that. <laughs> yeah. It all works though. It's just, it's good sometimes, isn't it? Just having a reference, being able to find you know, reference images just to get you started. Yes, I use re reference all the time in my work. Um, doing these is actually really fun because it's been one of the few projects that I've used somewhat less reference because it's so stylized and I can be silly with some stuff and I don't have to represent it exactly. So um, being a little bit more loose with that kind of stuff has been a lot of fun. But yes, I, I use reference all the time and I think it's I think it's very good to do. So I'm trying to figure out what I should work on next. I think probably the log, uh, after looking at that in black and white, I think I want to mess with that a little bit. So also I often, um, I don't have line in my finished work, um, especially like if, if I turn this off, if I turn this off, you can see quite it's it's quite messy and like it seems like something's missing. Um, mm -hmm. But because of the length of these streams, I think I might actually leave line in for this one because it, it takes a lot more time to be um, to be able to get that out of there. And usually, but we, usually what I do for that is I just put my um, layer with the um, the line drawing really really low opacity, and then I just kind of clean up the areas that are that are needed because the line sort of carries you a little bit. So what I might do in this one is just use like a, a line or a, a brush that has like a cool texture to it and kind of redo the line where, but leave, leave it in, kind of save some time. And what color would you do the line then? Would it be um, like in black pencil or like what? Yeah. What yeah, that's a good use? question. Cause I think you can do something really fun. It doesn't have to be a black line, you know? Mm. Um, it might be, it might even do a different color line for the different um, like maybe the bunny would get sort of a light blue line, maybe something that kind of matches with the shadow color of that um, object, whatever yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good idea. So that might be something for the, the next stream finishing touch thing. Yeah. It just looks so good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Go a little are, you, um, are you quite good then, Maddie, at um, knowing when it's done and it's finished and stepping away? Ooh, that's because a tough one. 
It is, isn't it? So, oh uh, how do you, you know, how, uh, you know, how many times do you think you've kind of gone back to something and 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 spent too long when it could have been done? Oh my gosh, that's definitely happened. Hundred percent, it's happened. I feel like with digital, it's easier for me to avoid that than with traditional art, and that's just one of the things I love about digital. Um, so sometimes what I'll do is. Um, I get to a point in an artwork where I'm pretty happy with it, but there's still more to do. Um, sometimes I will save like a whole new PSD at that point and just have that sort of as like a checkpoint and I'll keep working. And sometimes I'll end up going back and taking some things from an earlier version. Um, and then I'll be able to bring that back if I find that I did go in a bad direction or overwork something. I guess digital gives you that way of saving yourself from that. Whereas like in a painting, if I've painted too far you know it's kind of it is what it is you know you can't really go back <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah Sean's um got a, a good saying in the chat here when the clock hits zero it's done <laughs> I like that Sean. if I could live to that that would be uh yeah that would, that would be good yeah it's always hard isn't it it is hard it definitely gets better I do think the I, I think this is something that kind of plagues all artists forever, but I, I do think it gets a little bit better the more um, experience you have. I, I feel like I am slowly getting better at um, stopping at the right time, but you know, you always have those times where it happens the other way. Oh yeah. There's uh, somebody in the chat called Mothership who says, Maddie, absolutely love this series. What a wonderful fantasy world, just charming. Oh, thank you. Lovely. Maybe we can give some little, um, little tufts to these bushes back here. They're very stylized, but uh, I think it's kind of fun. I just love all the textures. It, it, you know, every single thing has something different to offer in this picture, you know? Thank you. I think those things are kind of, um, yeah, they're really fun for, I mean, you don't have to be a kid to enjoy that, but I do think for, for kids, it's really fun to have those like big textures, like more, a little bit more gritty yeah. and interesting to look at. Yeah, definitely. It just looks so cute. Oh. And will you be showing this on Instagram when it's finished tomorrow after your stream with Tony? Yes, definitely. Definitely I will. Amazing. So if you could pick one favorite feature in Photoshop that you cannot live without, what would it be? Oh my gosh. Okay. Picking, narrowing that down to one is like really hard. Yeah. I think it would be a common, oh man, if I could, it's either color dodge or it's like clipping masks or something like. Yeah. Probably clipping masks. Cause that's what I, that's something that I, I miss a lot in traditional. Um, but I love those layer blending modes and color, uh, color dodge and being able to like, really just spice up the lighting in something very easily. Mm. Yeah, it's always a hard question, but uh, sure. yeah, the cupping masks is something that's come up. Um, yeah, but yeah, that is good. Viola says cupping masks are pretty hard to live without. They are. Viola. What's funny is when I um, when I paint in watercolor, it almost reminds me of a clipping mask sometimes because you can like, you know, wet your paper in a certain area and then you can paint within that and the, the paint, yeah. the new color will spread out within that wet area only. So it's like traditional clipping mask. <laughs> yeah. See, Tim in the chat has put, for me, it would be undo. Who needs <laughs> layers anyway? <laughs> yes, yeah. that is a big one, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Undo is always good. This is just so good. Amazing. So what are you doing with Tony tomorrow? You're going to be adding more textures and, yes. you know, more areas, uh, you know, in this to bring these animals to life. 
Yes, like for example, things that I wanna do, um, add some texture to the moss back here. Um, I like to give a little bit of like rim lighting to things. Again, this is where you can just have fun with it because maybe there isn't actually rim lighting in this scenario, but you know, we can just do it because it's cool, we like it. <laughs> so yeah. putting a little bit of like highlight up here so that that kind of pops out from the background, stuff like that, we wanna take our time on it, but those types of things. Also at the end of the process is when I like to go through with some adjustment layers. Um, usually I'll use the curves, um, selective color, things like that, just to kind of like make tiny tweaks that make it feel a little bit, I don't know, just better. Just like to go through the sliders and things like that. See what I can do. Nice, having a play with it. Mm -hmm. Change it up a bit, always good. I'm going to try lowering the opacity and maybe adding a little bit of, of line like we were talking about. I'm just going to try to figure out what, what kind of texture we would want for that. Like for the bunny. Robert says, um, this is looking great so far, he says. Oh, thank you. I'll make that even lighter. Uh, but see that very tech, very gritty kind of textured line. I think something like that yeah. would be a fun way to replace the um, the line drawing and make it feel more like it belongs. And it's like a dark gray as well, so it's not black. Yeah, dark. A little bit closer mm -hmm. to the bunny's color. Annika says, um, great work as usual. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here, everybody. Stuart um, asks, have you tried um, pushing your child book style into other animals or mythical creatures? Um, actually, this bunny is like one of the first uh, non-mice <laughs> animals that I've done so far. So I guess this is like a little bit step in that direction for me. Um, Oh yeah, actually, you know what? There was a bird, there was a magpie in one of the others, but yeah, slowly, slowly I'm adding um, other mm -hmm. small creatures. Mythical creatures would be really fun. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I love the bunny though. This is brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. And we can, um, you know, go through the sliders and, you know, maybe try different some different effects or colors, you know, having that on its own layer is really nice because then I can, again, with the lock transparency and just trying things, um, we can make it, you know, brighter, darker, change, try a totally different hue. And that's how you come across those happy accidents, as Bob Ross would say, you know, just kind of going through the sliders and some surprise happens and you're like, oh, it looks awesome. Something you didn't even plan. Bruce has asked if there's a storyline with the mice illustrations. And um, we, we spoke about this earlier, Bruce, and there's not currently. Um, and Maddie's looking for uh, a storyteller <laughs> as somebody that can uh, put a story <laughs> to these images. Yes, of course. You know, this is uh, a good yeah. collaboration that's waiting to happen in the future. <laughs> Me and my mom talked about making a story um, together. So maybe she's going to come up with a story for them. Um, That'd be lovely. Yeah, oh, that would be so be fun. I'm gonna try giving a, a line to the mice. So I'm going to go with like a darker version of the shadow color that's already on them, something like close to what's there and mm -hmm. just. Tony says, Maddie, you should collaborate with Maddie on your children's book. I know, Tony, <laughs> we, we said this in the green room earlier. <laughs> oh my gosh. So cool. I know. So I've been writing a story since my kids were born and I've been illustrating it really slowly over the last 11 years. My daughter's 11 now. And um, and I, I'm just desperate to finally get out there. So I would say I write down all the tips from all the live streams to, to build these things. So we, we should definitely collaborate, for sure. 
That's going to be so special, though, a project that you've been working on, you know, for so long. I'm sure there's so many memories in that, in that project. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to have a, a side project, but obviously with work and with home and, the you know, it's finding time to fill yeah. in prioritize, actually. That's the hardest thing. It's to give it time, which I'm not good at. Um, and Elvis, the dog, keeps me very busy. <laughs> <laughs> so he's very quiet right now. So a little worrying. <laughs> what's he getting into <laughs> exactly <laughs> so yes oh my gosh so uh, Maddie I have to ask because um I really I really want to know the answer um what would be your dream project oh. like what's something that you would aspire you know like if you see like Disney movies for example you want to animate one of those or, or illustrate one of those or you know like what's what's your your dream Oh, that is so hard. I feel like I feel like it's changed over time. And now I feel mm. like the things that I want to do, the things that in inspire me, it's more like in regard to like teaching and things. Like I feel like a dream project would be some kind of teaching, involve some kind of teaching environment. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it would look like, whether it would be a course or something in person. Um, but as far as something that I would work on, um, I absolutely love the Studio Ghibli films and those beautiful background, tainted backgrounds. I know that's more of a traditional art thing, but I guess that might be sort of like a dream project for me. Amazing. Yeah, I could see that. I could see you doing a teaching series as well, getting kids into art and stuff, or yeah. adults, or anybody, everybody from all ages can, can get involved in this. Oh, definitely. Tony says, as you know, Maddie must have done the same, but my kids are all in their 30s now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get it out there, Tony. Do it. Yes. Yeah, Stuart says, it's always a joy to watch you paint. It really is. I mean, it's now, you know, we've got four minutes to go. And you've, you know, accomplished so much in this hour that um, well, oh, it's, just, it's just been a joy to watch. It really is lovely. There is a question from Mandira in the chat as well. Um, what are the stages of client illustration work for book covers? How should we approach research to avoid any form of plagiarism for such projects? That's a good question. That is a good question. So when you say um, avoid plagiarism, is that like to make sure that you don't accidentally plagiarize or is that like protection against other people plagiarizing? I'm not sure if I'm hmm. understanding the I question. Would, I would take it in the first instance. Okay. How did you avoid, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so for, for me, I've, I definitely try to think about that a lot when I'm doing any, any painting, because I do use a lot of reference material. So, um, I like to make sure that any, um, of my references, I like to take my own photos for one when possible, but obviously you can't take photos of everything in the world. <laughs> you don't have access to, uh, everything and every location. So you're going to have to get pictures from the internet, but there are places, um, you can of course, obviously buy the rights to an image. Um, there's Adobe stock. If you want to go that route, there's also, um, some uh, free online, uh, resources, Pexels, Unsplash. Um, those are like really popular ones where uh, photographers will upload their images, um, stuff like that. So I try to take, uh, so, so that way I know, even if I end up like heavily, um, taking from the reference, it's not a problem. Like I have person permission for that. So that kind of makes it easy. I think sometimes, you know, you find these great pictures on, on Pinterest, but then yeah, it gets to be difficult on like, if you don't, um, make it your own enough like where is that line drawn so I like to just remove that from the equation yeah that's good tips good tips um but as far as yeah I hope I hope I answered the question I'm not sure I think there may have been another part to that question but I, I hope I answered it yeah you definitely did I okay think the first part double checking now it was more about the stages of client illustration work for book covers um, and just setting it off at least, you know, setting it up for the stages. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I wish I, I wish I had more behind the scenes, um, experience with, uh, doing an actual book illustration, even though I'm sort of demonstrating that type of illustration here. Um, it's something that I've recently gotten into as far as painting in this style. And I haven't actually worked with uh, a publisher or done uh, my own uh, book or anything like that at this stage. So I can't mm. give yeah, yeah. too much behind the scenes on that 
Um, but anyway, with so many great tips today, though, Maddie. Honestly, you've covered so many, you know, just great ways in your process that we can all learn from. So it's, you know, oh, thank you. Really appreciated. It's so good. Well, uh, this week, um, as we mentioned earlier on, Maddie is back tomorrow with our very own and lovely Tony Harmer. And they're going to be adding even more to this illustration to, yes. to really bring these animals to life, more textures, more light. Um, so there's even more, you know, coming tomorrow. So definitely join us back at the same time uh, on Behance tomorrow. And, and if you're watching on YouTube, come over to Behance. All the questions that you put in the chat, you know, we make sure that they're asked. So, you know, come and join us. And then on Wednesday, as we mentioned, our very own Robert is here for my German streams um, and he'll be with Michael Munich and they'll be covering the updates in Premiere Pro so um, lots on this week of course so um, Maddie thank you so much for your time today um, it's been lovely meeting you I've been I've really enjoyed our, our Maddie stream today <laughs> me too so, thank you so much it was lovely uh, I really enjoyed it it was so good and uh, you've got lots of thanks in the chat I hope you get to see these following the stream mm -hmm. everyone's saying thanks they love your work so we're very happy to have you and we'll see you again tomorrow same time thank you Maddie thank, thank you everyone. bye everyone see you tomorrow